For the next 10 days, I will be going on an expedition to Antarctica. We're now standing on continental Antarctica. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Amazing! I'll be joining over 200 guests and crew aboard the Ocean Endeavour. A little bit excited and nervous. This is a real adventure. To get to Antarctica, we must spend over two days crossing the Drake Passage, a place where three oceans collide and where rough seas come as standard. There's an announcement that someone on the ship has gotten very, very ill, so much so that they have to turn back and get them to hospital. If we can make it there safely, and if we can navigate the ice, what awaits us will be something truly magical. There's a baby humpback whale circling our boat. So, come aboard with us today, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's go on a truly next level adventure to Antarctica. Okie dokie. Time to board. I don't know where Michael is. I think we've got separated somehow. The process of getting on the boat is quite complicated. You have to get on a coach and then you have to line up for ages. But we're here now. All right. So press the queue, get yourself checked in. Okay. That was easy. I got the key. Apparently Michael's already here. Hello, mate. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't know what I was expecting, but this is all right. So let's do the quick, a quick room tour because it's quite small. Here we are. <laughs> We've got a little bit of a living room situation with a little sofa and uh, a telly and a window. Very cool. And we can see out straight away. Not bad, not bad. And then you come through here and we've got twin bed. And they include some sort of uh, bathrobe. And then they give you this, this is a gift. So you get to keep that. I don't wanna grab the bed that Michael wants. This one's fine. Cheeky little single. And uh, we've got another telly. And it uh, looks like we've got like a list of things that's happening. And then we have some storage. Yeah, a little wardrobe with the extra pillows. We can hang our jackets and things. And then, the bathroom. So, shower, the throne, sink, hair dryer. What else do you need? What's in here? Oh, there's another bathroom. So we have a bathroom each. This is the first time I've ever been on a cruise, first time I've ever been on a expedition, and obviously the first time I've ever ventured as far as Antarctica and I'll explain more about the journey and the, the trials and tribulations and the adventures that we have to go through to get to Antarctica because it's, a, it's not as straightforward as just going on a simple cruise. This is a real adventure. So we're all a little bit excited and nervous mixed together. So let's go have a little look around the ship. Our ship is the Ocean Endeavour. She's a rather old ship that was refurbished in 2015. That means that she might not be the most luxurious ship in this region. However, as she's purpose-built for expeditions, this ship can deal with the ice, the Drake Passage, and navigate the tight Antarctica pathways with ease, which means we should be able to go further and see more of the continent than other ships operating in the area. Of course, I'd never been on a ship like this and I was super excited and so looking around, it was a little bit confusing. However, it wasn't that long until I started to discover a few of the best areas on board. There's a bit of a map here. 
my god there's a gym there's a salon there's a, a club there's a restaurant there's another lounge there's another lounge there's a sun deck there's a sauna there was the gym the spa and massage room and of course the upper deck areas which boasted incredible views below deck and throughout the ship it was a bit of a maze to be honest and i could tell that it would take me a while to not only learn my way around yeah. cup of tea but to also learn the new terms and phrases that this type of expedition would entail there's a mud room is that like where we rub mud and get like a mud spa or something So this is the mud room. It's, uh, I think it's like a, a place you come to get changed. You can see these are the boots that they give us. Yeah, this must be where we come to. Here he is. Is it hard to pick it on? No, it's just, uh, I'm already lost. Okay. Have you found your way around? Yes. Good to see you. This is Michael, everybody. We're uh, near, this is the mud room. I know, I thought it was like a mud spa or something, but there's a, there's a welcome drink somewhere. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where. It's massive, this ship, it's massive. Hello. Hello. We made it. <laughs> Did you get a welcome drink here? No, no yeah, we no, we were right too. Right, okay. We didn't even know there were welcome drinks until we met somebody. And I saw some, some blue champagne or something. Yeah. Okay, we found the bar. Little juice or a glass of champagne or something. This is like a little, a little bar or a pub or something. <laughs> I've never been on a cruise. You can probably tell because I'm wide-eyed and amazed by everything. Cheers, everybody! Cheers. After meeting Michael, it was time to head up to our first mandatory meeting, where we would learn a lot of the basics about the ship the crew, and the health and safety measures on board. And then it was time to head back to our rooms because we had to wrap up warm and get ready for the impending fire alarm test, something all passengers and crew must go through before we're allowed to disembark. We had our briefing, very fun. They went through all of the safety stuff and uh, they showed us the weather report. Oh my God, we're gonna be, uh, hitting some heavy seas tonight. So a few people are a little bit worried. Patty wanted to know if four foot seas was bad. Yeah, and Michael says it's bad. And did you catch the doctor what his specialty was? No. Oh, he's a gynecologist. <laughs> yeah. Like, this fits fine, what do you think? Looks good. Oh, I like these little thumb things. And we get to keep these. These are like a hundred dollars or something. 250. Sweet. You know, I like how they left the price tag on the inside of the jack. Uh, on the tag. Maybe you should get a size bigger at the. Maybe. No, because then the other jacket's gonna go on top of this. Yeah. Cool. So we have to go to the fire drill now, the mustard drill. Okay, we have to go to our muster point. Are you muster point B or A? B. B. Same as me. A muster drill, I would learn, is basically just a fire drill that all passengers must go through in order to comply with the rules of the sea. It was just a simple meeting really, with a walk up to our assigned lifeboat, just so that we all knew where to go if there was a serious emergency. We were also told by our onboard doctor that getting injured or falling ill during the expedition would mean that in almost all cases, the ship is unable to simply turn back or ask for a helicopter to rescue someone. Remember that the Drake Passage and Antarctica itself is so remote and hostile that practically nobody lives here or travels through it. And so the doctor was adamant that we all knew that any sort of rescue for any major emergency would literally take days. It was a little nervy, to be honest, to hear that, and there was a lot of worried faces during that section of the meeting. So the doctor told us very firmly, don't fall and hurt yourself, and don't fall seriously ill. Scary stuff to hear, but 
are part of the process of going this remote and this far away from any serious help is all part of the experience of going to Antarctica. Okay, that's it, we've cast the ropes. <laughs> you can tell I'm not a, a sailor. And we've just had a quick mad dash on uh, Michael's Wi-Fi, his data plan at the SIM card thing to send my mum, my girlfriend, and everyone a message to say that we're gonna go dark because the Wi-Fi prices are ridiculous. And it'll be a nice time to just disconnect and really immerse ourselves in the experience on the boat. I've got an audio book and a couple of movies on my MacBook. And uh, yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. And we'll, it'll be nice to just get away from everything, physically and mentally. So we're leaving. All we had now was two days of open ocean across the Drake Passage, leaving Argentina and making our way to Antarctica. How are you feeling? So far, so good. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, flying just over the water. We've just seen our first albatross. Oh, there he is. Right, so we have left. We're on our way to the Drake Passage. We've introduced ourselves to most of the names of the groups of the people and we're settling into life on this massive ship. We're a little bit worried about the weather report because according to the briefing at midnight, we're gonna be in crazy winds and big storm and everyone's a little bit nervous about that. Uh, but you know, if these guys, the staff, do it every 10 days and there and back and there and back for the whole winter. I'm sure it can't be that, that bad, but maybe I'm just, uh, I don't know, I think I'm trying to stay positive. Okay, so a little bit of drama, unfortunately, something bad's happened. Um, we had dinner and we were all having a good time, just chatting away, nice buffet. And there was an announcement because we, we had noticed we had stopped and we had turned and then we had just been not moving for a while. And uh, there was an announcement that someone on the ship has gotten very, very ill. So much so that they have to turn back and get them to hospital, which is like, during the briefing, they mentioned like the doctor came online on the microphone and told us, you know, please be careful. Please make sure you take care of yourself because once we get to Antarctica, there is no hospitals. We can't turn around and come back. There's no helicopter rescue. Like we're on this boat and um, someone got very sick and we've had to stop and they need to do an emergency. So we've got to go all the way back. Uh, we've got about two hours and then we've turned around. We're gonna go back. So it's just a slight delay and no one, no one is upset, no one's angry. We've got 10 days on this ship, an extra two, three, four hours, who cares? If that person can get some medical help and hopefully make through whatever they're going through, um, that's the main thing. So um, we've just been having a quiet couple of drinks upstairs. I'm not really in the mood to drink alcohol. I'm absolutely knackered. So I am going to unpack, unwind, have a quick shower and get into bed early and um, Hope that I sleep all through the night and uh, the storm and the bad weather that's out there in the open ocean doesn't uh, cause too much um, seasickness or something. Anyway, I've been rambling, I'm tired, so I'm gonna call it day one. The next morning, we woke up to some good and to some bad news. The bad news was that during the night, the passenger who fell ill had been taken off board and was en route to the nearest hospital back on the mainland. Thank goodness that they did get sick 
So early into the trip, and we were only two hours away from Ushiawa. God forbid they had gotten really seriously ill a day or two later, because things would have been much more complicated. The good news was that the delay had meant by the time the passenger was taken off board and we had restarted our expedition, we had missed the worst of the stormy weather that was forecast. And so we had much calmer seas than was previously forecasted. So for the next two and a half days, this was our life. Simply sailing across the vast, deep blue ocean of the Drake Passage with only a few things to keep us entertained. Rise and shine, gorgeous. What's that? <laughs> this is my other camera. This is cool, right? So Chuck is the remote. So the TV channels on the boat, they have like movies, they have documentaries about penguins and, you know, David Attenborough stuff. But they have this channel that shows you where we are so we can actually like GPS see where we are and how far we've got to go and when we get to Antarctica we'll be able to see like where exactly we are in comparison to the rest of the islands and the actual ice sh shelf itself Oh love, where are we? Are we halfway to Bristol? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna nip upstairs and have breakfast, do you do you want to come or are you gonna just chill? Far humbug Okay Alright I'll show you what breakfast is like of all the food on board, breakfast was by far my favourite. They had international options, cereals, cooked breakfasts, and being British, they even had baked beans. <laughs> okay, so breakfast was uh, really good. Baked beans, sausages, bacon, omelette, happy days. <laughs> what I really like, actually, about this ship and this expedition is it's just packed full of wildlife. And you might think it just looks like the open ocean, but I can see albatross, loads of different types of birds. And, but there's also lots of chances to see whales. Someone on our trip this morning, when he went out the front um, at seven o'clock, took pictures of a whale. And you can like identify which species you saw and all around the ship, they've got maps and information. And there's a library where you can get, you know, read books about famous expeditions. It's just gonna be a really educational adventure. So that's a really good thing, and I can't wait to hopefully maybe see a, a humpback whale or a pilot whale or whatever we're going to find. They have orcas down here, so that would be that would be very very special. But I'm not going to pray for something like that. Just going to just enjoy the journey. To be fair, the crew tried hard to keep us interested. They put on three or four lectures on each day to teach us about the bird life in this area, the whales and all of the other species that call this section of the ocean their home, and they kept us informed about the weather changes every single evening. There wasn't really any entertainment put on, so the passengers and I, we just started to mingle, started to make some friends, and enjoy evenings and dinners at the buffet and the bars just to pass the time. One thing that was really cool, however, and something quite unique, was that the captain of the ship allows passengers inside the bridge to watch them steer and navigate the ocean. As we enter the Drake Shake, and the weather has become a little bit, a little bit more difficult. Getting my sea legs. <laughs> We've come up to the bridge because what's very unique about our ship is at certain times of the day, when the crew aren't overworked, they put a sign up and it's available for us to come in and share the bridge and see how they work. Open bridge. Open bridge. Unlike a lot of ships after COVID, they started doing open bridge. And it's really interesting because at one end, they've got all of the high tech stuff, but on this side, they've got a lot more of the retro uh, analog systems because they need everything. They need satellite, GPS, and then if that breaks, they need to be able to rely on more electrical, simple systems. And if that breaks, then it's down to the compass and the spotter. Do you know anything about the spotter? There's a man just staring out the front. He's not taking his eye off the sea at all. I need to ask, 
It seems like it's a real serious job. It looks very serious. And you've got all the coffee and tea and the switches and screens and all sorts of things. But yeah, it's a good spot to use the binoculars for free. Let's get a nice close-up of the albatrosses and maybe we'll see a whale. So this is a real cool, very unique thing that you can do. Come on the bridge. So, not much really happened for the next two days. We kept ourselves busy, we kept ourselves learning about this region, and we tried our best to keep our food down <laughs> as we hit some rougher seas from time to time. And so, after two and a half days sailing the Drake Passage and sadly losing a passenger earlier on at the beginning and enduring some quite rough seas along the way, we had finally made it to Antarctica. Good morning. Good morning, gorgeous. So, we got an announcement when we woke up at six o'clock this morning, that we've arrived. We're not in the Sea of Cortez, that's for sure. Yeah, we had a little cheeky sneak peek out the window and it looks um, absolutely ridiculous. So we're super excited to get a proper look. Um, stairs. Stairs, this way. From here, I've been able to quickly navigate. No I didn't even know there was a lift. No one's on the lift. I mean, it's been really quick. <sighs> We're finally here. Two days of the Drake. Two days of lectures, safety briefings. We're gonna, we're gonna call it the Drake Faf, but we're here. <laughs> That's where Carl Watson lives. Carl got upgraded because He's a famous YouTuber. It's not even that cold. Well, this has exceeded expectations. I suddenly have a craving for a blended margarita. <laughs> it's six o'clock in the morning and the morning mist is just catching the top of the peaks. So we don't have any blue skies. It's actually gray skies. It's actually miserable, the weather, but it's just the glaciers, the seabirds, the ice. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. This is the first time I've been speechless. Like, they prepared us for this moment. I can't actually get my head around that. Oh my god. How long have you been awake? Hey. About 20 minutes. 
about 20 minutes. Wow. What do you think, buddy? Hi. <laughs> Words are hard right now, aren't they? <laughs> Looks like the penguins are coming back this way. It's taken over six months of planning and preparing and anticipation and a week of traveling South America and 39 hours of flying to get to this area of the world in the first place. And of course, as you've seen in this video, two days of eventful sailing to reach Antarctica. And as I look across, and another huge glacier is revealed. The true scale of this place, the true beauty of this place, is undescribable. I will try my best to gather my thoughts and share with you this continent in the next episode because I'm a little bit emotional and I don't really know how to put my words together and I just want to take a moment with Michael and the group and just find little sections of the boat to myself and uh, and soak this in and I can see someone's in tears. This is a very, very powerful moment. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode from Antarctica. Coming up on the next episode, the Zodiacs get lowered into the sea and we gear up for our first taste of life on the ice. Here we are, nice and snug on the Zodiac. We're now standing on continental Antarctica. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Amazing! We touch down on solid ground and land on multiple locations where we see an outrageous amount of wildlife. Antarctica is pure paradise and the absolute pinnacle of my travel experience to date. And of course, this unpredictable destination will still throw loads of surprises our way. The next episode is by far the highlight of this series and you cannot miss it. So click right here to watch it right now and subscribe to the channel so you never miss an adventure.